So I'm going to jump into a demo now, but I want to explain the ingredients that go into these transformative agents that you're able to build uh, in NinjaCat right now. And we call it MTTD, Models, Tools, Techniques, and Data. So, you know, models, that is, uh, you know, the GPT-4 is the cloud. These, these are the um, large language models that are synthetic intelligence of the entire internet. Like they've literally been trained on the entire internet and they are, um, reasoning enabled, right? Which is wild. They can come up with a, a plan and they have these chain of thought uh, capabilities. But once these models are given a, a, a goal, they'll come up with um, a plan. Okay, I need to go dig through this data to find the answer to that question, for example. Once they come up with a plan, they then need to act against that plan. And then that's where the concept of tools come into the AI. What are the set of tools needed to act against that plan? And there's many things depending on what the the task the agent is doing. You know, the first one is data retrieval. You know, negative Nancy is, I'll show you we built today. Negative Nancy's going to go find potentially wasteful spend digging through the uh, Google search uh, terms report. So there needs to be like a natural language to SQL. How do I translate this question into the structured query language, the SQL that'll go into the database and find the relevant data um, to bring into the context window to answer the question? Other types of tools is image generation, right? If we want to build an agent that can help us build uh, ad creatives, um, video generation. Uh, we'll show you an agent today that can both write code, um, execute the code, deploy the code, right? So those are sets of tools or actions that they can take. Uh, we just released this week new tools where these agents can go out and either one, scrape an individual website, a landing page as additional context to bring into its task, as well as another tool to do uh, web research uh, utilizing uh, perplexity there. And then there's, of course, other tools like having it send an email, having it make a phone call. And where we're even evolving to in NinjaCat is a set of tools that can go beyond the insights and recommendations, but um, to the next level of once it makes an insight and recommendation saying, would you like me to add these negative keywords? We'll be able to say, yes, please go ahead. So a set of actions, very Zapier-like of Google ads, add negative keywords, Google ads, pause campaign, if you, if you understand uh, what I'm speaking about there. And then the other, uh, you know, the true differentiator here is, I love seeing the uh, poll we took earlier of like content was like 6%, everyone was like data analytics. So everyone started with content. It's just such an easy thing. You can do most of that stuff in, in chat GPT. The really hard stuff, the data and analytics is how do you bring in that data context? This not the just the unstructured data chat, your PDF, but like we have a data warehouse that might have hundreds and hundreds of table across hundreds or thousands of, of customers. How do we interrogate that data and bring it in uh, in the right way? Uh, to have just the right context for the task we're, we're trying to do here. So data is, is the true differentiator, which we'll get in today, both with your, your first party data, your third party data, as well as any uh, open or, or public data sets that might exist. And then the techniques is really how we bring that all together. I'll show you today the concepts of like agent training. Some people do model fine tuning. And then we'll talk about this agent orchestration where, you know, these agents that we have already today call in sub agents to do code uh, interpreting, for example, and then we'll give you a sneak peek of what we're super excited about at the end of this, the uh, most exciting part of the demo, Maggie, or what we call marketing uh, AGI. So I'm going to take the um, screen share and we'll jump into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Place current share, share sound. Okay, can I just get a confirmation that you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, so it all starts with data, that data context, right? So if we wanna build negative Nancy, an agent that is an expert in digging through the Google ads, search terms data and finding potential uh, wasteful spend, uh, we need to make sure she has that data context. So in NinjaCat, we have our data cloud that allows you to go through any of our hundreds of integrations, any of the native connectors or any custom data that might be coming in from a Google sheet, your own cloud data warehouses. And we know that um, negative Nancy is gonna need to specifically have access to that search query performance uh, data set. That's gonna give us the dimensions that we need, like what was the search term, right? Um, and then what were the performance metrics associated with it? So that's uh, one of the gist of getting the data in. We make it really easy in NinjaCat with our data cloud, choose any source, choose those streams of data, and those get turned into what we call data sets. Once we have those data sets available um, in our system, if we go over to the AI agent module, um, I'm going to go pick uh, Nancy here as an easy start, right? So negative Nancy, we'll go edit negative Nancy. 
So um, one, we just released last week, uh, our agent builder internally, we call it Bob, right? Bob says like, what's, what's the goal of this agent? And then we'll just start walking you through. You probably want this data set and ask some clarifying questions to uh, crystallize the prompt and select the right data sets for you. But I wanna show you what that steps uh, actually look like manually and where we start and a lot of what the experience was with uh, CMG. So number one is um, when you have, once you name your agent, which is a very important thing. Uh, as, as Mindy knows that way encouraged by and people get excited about the name and what does she do? So we love the name Negative Nancy, who's a special set at negative keywords. We need to make sure that uh, Negative Nancy has access to that uh, Google Ads, Google um, search query performance data set. Now our agents are unrestricted in terms of how many data sets. It could be one or multiple data sets as, as part of their context there. And then after you uh, choose the data, we need to give a set of uh, instructions um, to the agent, right? So in this scenario here, um, the, the job of Nancy is to go find uh, potentially underperforming or irrelevant uh, keywords that should be added to the negative keyword list. So this one actually was uh, used build using our new um, agent builder. And we told our agent builder what was the goal of negative Nancy. And then it chose the right data set and then it automatically built this prompt for us. So a human did not have to, to write this. And uh, I'm sure CMG will be excited because this just came out this week. Before this, it was, you know, banging on the prompts, constantly trying this and that and trying to do best practices. So we took all those learnings, put them into our, our build experience where you could literally just chat uh, in this agent, agent builder experience. It'll find the data set and then build the prompts for you. And then you could preview it on the right hand side here. So the, the concept here though is it has a specific set of steps that it's telling the agent, right? To go through, look through the, the data, look at these date ranges. This is how you should present the data to the user, for example. And then that uh, end user experience um, is as simple as this. If somebody comes in to negative Nancy, right? They can come in and say, do your thing for Coca-Cola. Now we could just say, do your thing. We don't have to write a prompt of looking for you know, negative keywords because negative Nancy's system prompt already knows what her single task is. Go dig through this data, find the potentially uh, wasteful spend uh, and come up with a list of negative keywords. So in this scenario here, do your thing for Coca-Cola. Another important thing in the agency environment is building agents that can scale across, you know, hundreds or potentially thousands of customers. You don't want to build a individual agent for every customer because again, you might already have hundreds or thousands of variations of agents. So a key tool that NinjaCat has is your data set might have all customers in it. So it'll filter out to a specific uh, customer, in this case, Coca-Cola, even though that data set might, again, have hundreds or thousands of customers in it. Uh, we'll then go rip through, find the right uh, customer that we want to run the negative keywords for. And then we'll go ahead and execute um, against that data set, the, the search query performance, run the query that the uh, agent builder prompted to go find uh, keywords that match this specific criteria, these performance metrics, and then it returns a result here. So here we have a list of uh, potentially um, irrelevant uh, search terms that we can then go um, add as negative keywords. That's a very basic concept. Um, more advanced use cases here uh, is something such as media mix married, right? So some people on this call here may have experience with media mix models, but one of the most hardest tasks you can do, just building a data set, cleaning the data set, then you got to build the model, rate the model, do lag defect analysis, requires Python. We have um, an agent here called Media Mix Mary, uh, who has access to this data set that you're able to build in the data cloud of the spend by day for the last two years across all different channels and tactics. And then we're giving that data set uh, to Mary here. And so your Media Mix Mary, expert data scientist, especially in Media Mix modeling, ex excels in tasks such as budget allocation, ROI analysis, what steps to follow, the five specific steps to follow, and some important steps uh, when she does the Media Mix modeling. And then the result of that is we could say go, include zero days lag defect. We could see the plan that she's going to go ahead and execute. She's going to go rip through that data set of the performance uh, across those different channels for the last 24 months and then uh, execute what her second step was, which was to do a lagged effect analysis, right? Because when you spend money on TV versus radio versus a bottom of funnel Google search campaign, you might see a, a, um, a statistically a significant difference of from channel to channel of day zero impact, right? We spend money today, we see impact today, we spend money on a billboard, we might see uh, the impact X days later. So that's an important uh, 
element to inform the media mix model. So it's going ahead, it's calling in its sub agent. So this is that orchestration layer, a sub agent, we have our own custom code interpreter that can go uh, and execute Python um, to do all the data science regression type stuff needed for any of these steps here. And then it's just summarizing the results of all that Python work up to the parent agent here. And here we have a nice uh, lagged effect analysis, both in chart form as well as tabular form, right? And then we're saying proceed. We want to uh, feed that into the model. So the next step, it's going to go ahead and build a media mix model. Again, you could see all the, the regression, the Bayesian uh, work that it's doing here um, to verify. It. And then it is going to go ahead, build the model, rate the model. As we're seeing here, it's rated it as a 89, uh, which is quite good. And then it's going to summarize it to the user, right? So this is the, the output of a media mix model, what's called a coefficient, which tells us for every dollar that we're spending on this campaign, we're making $2.50. However, for um, uh, these display ads, we might be losing as much as you know three and a half cents for every dollar um, that we spend. And then it automatically goes, because it was instructed to do so, to use Python to do a diminishing returns analysis for each channel and then get to a um, simulation, right? So, so what? Um, we want to know where should we shift budgets? And in this scenario here, it's telling us that after the simulation, all that context above, uh, the model, the diminishing returns analysis, and running a simulation, it's saying that if we were to increase budget by 20% for these high performing, high coefficient channels and decrease by 20%, uh, from these channels, this uh, advertiser could potentially see a lift of half a million dollars, right? So that's a more advanced use case, but just showing uh, the, the true capabilities uh, of these agents and how the models, tools, techniques, uh, and data can come together. In addition to doing um, data analytics and insights, content generation, image generation, another cool one that we built uh, is one called the um, AI app data creator. So let me go into this one, right? So this app um, is designed to build uh, custom dashboards in Python and Streamlit, which is a front-end library. So Python is the, 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 the data science language um, capable of doing all types of crazy stuff, predictions, and then Streamlit is a nice front-end library to, to add a front-end to, to Python projects. So we can tell this agent, please build a campaign and keyword exploration app. That's all we're telling it. This agent knows all the data it has access to, all the data sets in, in the data cloud. And then it's coming up with a plan and saying, okay, to build you a campaign and keyword exploration app, uh, here's the plan, the, the, the metrics, the dimensions, and the features, right? And it's highlighting, these are the dimensions, these are the KPIs, these are some of the features like filtering, date ranges that you're gonna want on this thing. And we can say, no, well, you should also include this, also include uh, you know, this type of, of functionality. But I'm just first pass, build me a campaign keyword exploration app. I like the plan, I'm saying, go ahead and do it. It then goes ahead, it writes all the Python code, adds a Streamlit front-end UI to it. So writes the code, containerizes, so which means it's actually taking this code, packaging it up, and then deploying it um, as its own dedicated application here. Uh, and the result of that is this. I click on that link and I'm brought into this Python dashboard that we willed into existence with no coding knowledge. It has campaign performance here. It has keyword performance. If we wanted to add more functionality on the left, additional filtering, benchmarking, we could just ask it to do so. In fact, I'll show you in this scenario here, we said, great, please add interactive ngram functionality uh, on a new tab. And here it's coming up with a plan. And then it does a revision where this one had campaign and keyword, this is the same one campaign keyword, but this new functionality that has this interactive uh, ngram functionality uh, as part of it. Pretty neat, right? So wild world uh, that we're living in here is, is these agents that can do all types of, of tasks uh, empowered by the data and the tools to do so. And then one of the things that we're thinking about is you know, what are the different ways to access these agents? Because again, you can end up with hundreds or potentially thousands of these. There's so many, there's taxonomy, Tina, find all campaigns that find and fix uh, any campaigns um, that have these taxonomy issues, right? There's ones in here for helping prepare for a call, dig through all the data and help prepare the rep to, to surface the insights and the recommendations they should discuss on their call. So there's gonna be so many of these fine-tuned agents to, to specific tasks. And we, we, we tell ourselves, say, can we build like an orchestrator agent, like the generalist that sits above all these? That is a generalist, but if we ask a question to it and there's a specialist that knows how to do, do that job better, um, it will call that agent in um, to give the specific fine-tuned answer. So 
Let me show you what we're cooking here, a little sneak peek of an exciting future to come um, to what we call Maggie or, or marketing uh, AGI. Gotta be quiet. Hello there. How's it going? Great. Can you hear? Can everyone hear Maggie okay? Jay, can you hear Maggie okay? Yeah. <laughs> Loud and clear. Maggie's coming through. All right. Awesome. Maggie, uh, we just want to show off your capabilities quick. Can you help us dig into sales for the last 12 months? Absolutely. Let's dive into the sales data for the last 12 months. Give me just a moment. All right. The sales performance data is in. Over the past 12 months, total sales reached 335,000. Well, can we dig into leads a little bit deeper? For leads for the last 12 months. Here's the deep dive. Here's the deep dive into the leads data over the past 12 months. Okay, we get the gist here, but before, um, maybe just Google Ads. Can we look at Google Ads for the last 12 months? Can you explain what you're seeing? Any insights? Absolutely. Over the past 12 months with Google Ads, we've had a total of 80,018. Okay, we get the idea. We're running short on time, so I hate to cut you short. Maggie, you're the best. I love you. We will talk to you later. No worries at all. It was great chatting with you. Talk soon. Talk soon, Maggie. <clears throat> really exciting. So, you know, that's what we call Maggie or marketing AGI is you can feel the AGI, right? You start to build these agents that complete a task, and then there's these uh, orchestrator agents that you can ask a question to, and they can answer the question and work with their teammates. And um, our vision, you know, for Maggie is, is exactly as we state here. There's going to be an AI assistant slash agent for, for almost everything. They're going to evolve from these tools into what feel you know to be your, your teammates. They'll participate in your Zoom meetings and they're going to creatively fulfill tasks with minimal supervision, right? They still need that supervision like Mindy talked about, and they're going to automate the monotonous while amplifying the meaningful. So uh, super exciting stuff. 